Hello and welcome to another Office 365 Hours. My name is Christian Buckley. I'm the Brand Alliance Director at AvPoint and a Microsoft MVP and Regional Director. And I am joined today by Noah Sparks, a culture and change strategist at uh, Planet Technologies, rapidly growing Planet Technologies, also a former Microsoft MVP, and prior to that, a customer success manager at Microsoft. Good morning, Noah. Good morning, Christian. I think you are perfectly uh, aligned with this topic. Like this is your meat and potatoes topic here, where we're discussing how digital skills are hampering adoption. Everybody's talking about you know, adoption and needing to focus on adoption and the employee experience, the partner experience. You know, like end to end. You know, what is the behavior? It's not just of the target workload, the solution that we're using, but thinking about. Over the course of the today, are the tools that they're that they're working with are they integrated? Are they functioning properly? Is it effectively being used within the organization? So maybe we kick things off in this discussion by talking about what is the general state of digital skills with the customers that you're working with? I would say, Christian, excellent to be with you. That organizations are overly optimistic on this front. They <laughs> they are thinking that their employees are far more capable uh, than than they truly are with these advances in capabilities. Right? I, I tend to talk about these features and 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 capabilities as superpowers. And if you truly had the curiosity to go explore those superpowers, you would know that, for instance, a uh, process improvement team could take a Word document that they've generated out of a, uh, a rapid improvement uh, experience with a team, mm -hmm. share it out in review mode only if it was cloud enabled, right? But they're still stuck <laughs> in this world where you send a physical document in an email, right? And now you have virginitis and you don't know which one is the most current. And People are never really given the opportunity to make sense of these superpowers within their job roles, right, and their context. And that's that's where I've been focusing my uh, my efforts lately is structuring and facilitating a your best work uh, workshop, right? This is a session where we get into your processes, look at how you're doing them today. Mm -hmm and really exposing you to some of the streamlined ways of accomplishing those same tasks. And the team that I recently did this with, they they said, if we start working with review mode only, that's going to cause a lot of people to turn their heads towards us and say, how are you doing that? So I think there's still a lot of uh, trepidation and lack of curiosity ultimately in the workplace among end users to make sense of their their superpowers, they just default to to, to what's uh, what's known, right? And, and tradition. And, well, you know, you know, I've I've been doing these. As you're aware, I've been doing these productivity tips sessions, and you know, uh, solo with my good friend. You know, you know, uh, Tom Duff. 
we've been doing this for years and there when we were doing these in person uh we have you know packed rooms uh, a lot of times at, at, at these major events around this topic that people are really hungry for this and in an hour i might go through 15 or 20 productivity tips and the same pattern uh, uh holds every time there's people who's like ah, i've heard of that uh yeah i'm aware of that that's been out there for a long time uh, this, this, the third one, nothing. And then the fourth one, they're like, oh my gosh, this will change my life. And a lot of it, they're like simple little things. They're just, they're not trained on, like they go and they find a feature somehow. They're not trained on some of the, you know, the, the under the radar features that could dramatically change the way that they're working with the product. They've done it the same way. Like I've been using Excel since the mid nineties and sometimes forget about all of the new capabilities that are out there, not just those basic functions. And so it takes a little going outside of that safe zone uh, to explore some of these areas to understand how I might improve my you know, quality of my work. Yeah, let me add some color there. So a, a, the same team, the manager, uh, onboarded someone recently to his team and they did not receive a desk phone right those are kind of uh those have gone the way of the dodo but he still has his and he in confidence shared that he's petrified that that desk phone that that's been there for 20 years is going to be taken from him at some point right <laughs> mm. but you think of and, and that's a digital tool right yeah about digital tool, digital skills, a desk phone is certainly in that realm, and there is real hesitancy, right, for people to give up what they know and love because they trust it. And I think uh, organizations do a disservice to their to their people by not allowing them to uh, experience technology and trust it the same way yeah. a desk phone, right? Well, some of the 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 the, the problem is that you have. I kind of see both sides of this where, um, you know, sometimes companies believe it's like, hey, well, there's just it's just a new version of Office or there's just an update here or, or even with telephony. It's like well, we're moving it all to a digital model. It's integrated into the tools and stuff and we'll take away people's phones. And the assumption is it's like people intuitively understand how to use these things and we'll just adopt it. You know, here you have, you just shared an example of somebody who was afraid to adopt. That may be true. It's very easy. I, I loved having that, actually the integrated phone before moving entirely to the digital version. But then on the other side is that you have, uh, you know, so that that's something where, you know, companies make that mistake. And, uh, uh, you know, and then I think end users also make the mistake sometimes, you know, of their of their own skills. Oh yeah, I know how to use this stuff. I can come up to, to speed. And so again, they might be using the 10% of the technology that they do understand the basic features, but not understand all of the unlocked power underneath the surface. I, I consider myself an expert in office, right? And went to embed a gallery view of a list on a page and found out I can't do that. So I saw the tweets and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yep about your your uh, understanding of a tool and they often don't align right yeah well then also too with the evergreen mode of just SaaS solutions as well things can change buttons move features could be added or dropped they could function slightly differently i do like that there has been a conscious effort by microsoft to look at things like the sharing capabilities across workloads and saying you know Wherever I go into something that's a Microsoft branded product and I see the word share, I have certain assumptions that I'm going to be able to share, that there will be some output, that there are common locations, you know, common attributes to the sharing capability. Used to be a completely different experience based on the workload, but they've, they've shored a lot of that up now. I, I agree. I applaud them for bringing consistency across that sharing experience because it can be very confusing and uh, trip people up. Yeah. Well, one of the things you know about all this, we, we understand the nuances of this, but why is it every time the economy shrinks or or even not even the, the, the there's not even budget control so much as well, 
you know, budgetary, not economy related, or there's time that we need to cut off of a project or a deployment says, oh, we said we needed four months to roll this out. We need to do it in two. Well, we could just cut training or the budget. We have budget issues. We'll just cut back on the training there. Why is that the go to the first thing that they go pull from, which impacts everything further down the line? People's ability to use the technology. Yeah, we at Planet just recently introduced on-site uh, training once again. And when when people see the the cost associated with being on-site present with them physically, uh, they turn back to the to the virtual. So there is there is some sensitivity around the price, right? What it costs, and I don't. I don't feel like there's always been a clear ROI, right? Uh, if I invest here, am I going to see the results? We've seen kind of a blanket approach, right? A one size fits all to training. And if if you look across an organization, everyone is not starting at the same <laughs> starting line, right? And so the approach that I advocate for uh, most often is a community approach where you have some advanced users, right, that want to take a leadership role, similar mm -hmm. uh, how user groups operate, right? We're we're mm -hmm. Mugat, uh, the Microsoft user group of Utah. Yep. There are some enthusiasts that that will step up, right, and and uh, drive essentially because it's important to them and uh, it makes their work easier if everyone else has the the capabilities, and those leaders then grow. Uh, and nurture the talent that is initially interested, and then they then turn those people into advocates, right, and champions. We we hear a lot about digital champions programs now, and so that's that's I think uh, what what an organization has in mind when they cut the budget, but that still is resource intensive, right? You're not going yeah. to volunteers to take on more of that type of evangelism work and community work all on their own. You need to be intentional and strategic about that move. Well, that really speaks to like your background as a customer success manager is this idea that, hey, it's great to have the community tools and aspects, but it takes nurturing. It takes work It take, to get people to feel comfortable and open to be able to share, to ask for help, to be able to make that the first place that they go. I mean, now when I have a technical issue or question, the first place I go is out to the online technical communities. I don't quite get over to like Reddit. I know some people just love Reddit for stuff. I usually find a lot of unhelpful information on Reddit more than I find helpful. Um, but finding YouTube videos, having certain blogs and sites, and, you know, aggregation sites for content, um, Microsoft Tech Community is a great example of that. Um, uh, you know, being able to go out or even on Facebook and posting a question and finding immediately people that are on there live in one of those environments jumping on and trying to help you assess, like if you considered this, you know, uh, to to clarify what's happening. You know, the you get a lot of the old "Have you tried turning it off and on?" Um, responses. Um, and, and a lot of the uh, want to sound helpful, but I'm not actually helpful telling you hire a consultant to help you with that. Oh, thank you so much. You know, <laughs> but, uh, but, but it's actually just a great online. It's a, it's a great place to go to refine your question, to find if it is a simple answer that you're just missing and get that first layer of training. Yeah. What, what you're highlighting, I think, is the work that the community does to connect you to content. Right, so <laughs> there is there is a plethora of content. I mean, it's overwhelming now. If you if you want uh, if you want to get up to speed on any one of these uh, capabilities or apps themselves, right? There's a gazillion. I believe the phrase. I believe the phrase is a veritable cornucopia of content. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they're doing a, an exceptional job of producing that content, right? It's uh, 
some of it is geared towards um, people that very that know very little about the application, right? And mm-hmm. it's that way. Others are uh, they know their audience and they're they're speaking to admins or advanced users, right? And so but the missing piece within an organization, in my opinion, is that community, right? Yeah. Who cares about me enough to connect me to the content that matters to me, right? I, and that's that's why there's a lot of interest in Viva Learning, right? Where you can uh, make that a more top of mind intentional action throughout your day, right? When you see that app pinned on the left uh, of, of Teams. So yes, the, there there is crucial work that needs to be done to connect the content, which there is no lack of content out there for these apps, to the, uh, the people interested, right? In right. Need. To help surface, well, it's again that phrasing of the, it's the, the right content at the right time. Um, and, and surfacing that. And so sometimes, uh, you know, like, you know, there, there are problems with search, searching for an answer. Well, that kind of requires that you use the right phrasing wording to be able to identify that. Um, was the content tagged correctly to be able to be found using those search terms? So sometimes you might have the exact content that you need, but you can't find it but somebody in the community can lead you towards that, help surface that. I was gonna ask, my next question was, like, where do you see the largest gaps in technical skills and training these days? We've kind of already addressed two of them is like needing to, to utilize the community more and then also uh, making sure that there's the content and that people have access to the content. Anything else that you see in gaps today? What's your opinion on the content, uh, the state of content? Yeah, there's, um, I, I think that it's, it's always good to have more content. I always encourage people that are kind of up and coming, writing, speaking, um, that, that uh, it doesn't matter if they think that there's this perfect article that explains the thing, that your perspective is still of value. Your industry, your experience, your learning path along the way. And so I think more people need to share their real world experiences with, using, I mean, we're talking about technology here. So using technology, because if I'm in the education space and I am at the new to intermediate level, and I'm talking about my journey and what I'm learning, that is going to resonate far more with people that are in a similar space than going to even the Microsoft site, looking through docs.microsoft to find the technical documentation, because it puts it in perspective. And that's, so valuable. My my work in the content space has really been great. We've got the base level, right? It's kind of generic and generally uh, applicable to everyone. But as soon as you get into a process, it, it becomes fuzzy. How do I actually apply this? And not every organization is outfitted the same way with all the variables, right? Uh, right. Within the M365, right? Uh, often I work with, with organizations that are not allowed to share with anyone, right? That allow anyone to access the link. And that introduces a lot, a lot of uh, conundrums, right? For, for people actually trying to do work. How do, I, how do I actually accomplish what I need to? And that leads to uh, really focused and targeted conversations around, well, what are you, what are you trying to achieve? Is there a better route, right? Than trying to shoehorn this into to SharePoint? Is there a, a shared channel maybe that we could explore in Teams? That A, a great example of customers that like, has, we have some you know, uh, government, some military customers that are very limited. They can't go just out to Google or Bing and search for things. They're not able to access some of these community sites. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how much of a special case that is because those are massive entity entities. Right. Yeah. And so government, state, and federal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the defense industrial base operates very similarly, right? And uh, those are large, large organizations. So what other gaps do you, do you see gaps in just basic, like information worker skill set? Is that still a, a problem or, or are people in general fairly mature on their, their ability to use the basic office suite? and and even competing tools but familiar with kind of that 
baseline technology, or do you still see that as a gap? Uh, absolutely a gap still exists, Christian. There's, uh, there's folks out there that want to do amazing things with technology and just have never been given the, the autonomy or time, right? It's, it's not truly sh- sanctioned by the organization, and so they, they feel like it's detracting from doing a job but would save them half an hour a day, right, if they, if they could nail the skill. I'm thinking of a, uh, an individual on a recent training who's, who wanted to apply what they learned about Excel and, and a simple thing like a table and how do I, how do I sort a table, right? And mm-hmm. was worried about the entries being the, the columns not aligning after, after sorting. And that's it's kind of a basic digital skill, but there, there are still people who struggle with these concepts. And uh, there's industries that, uh, that we should not assume are, <laughs> are uh, early adopters on technology, right? They're, yeah. they're patients, they're saving lives and technology comes secondary in those situations. So um, I think, I think simply raising awareness that, that not everyone is uh, on an equal playing field yet. Um, and I don't think we ever will be to be, yeah. there's a wave of, uh, more immersive technology, right? The, the metaverse is, is the new term out there. Right. And you well, well, as many times. Well, that, but that's something no one I always think about. Like we're, we're, everybody's running towards to wanting to talk about, write about, you know, so these are the, the authors, the speakers, the MVPs, the, the experts that are out there that want to talk about the next greatest thing out there. I, I've always found that what's like the scenarios that you just d- defined, things that are, uh, you know, they're basic, you know, user functionality, how to go and, and do something. If I want to, you know, I've built a list. What can I do with a list if I want to do something offline with it? If I want to, I mean, I don't know, just think of those scenarios that users have those basic needs to walk through and do it. The, again, that's why I love the productivity tips. And I look at where, where I've blogged, where I've created some of this content, some of the most popular articles that I've written that were, I wrote years ago, like one of them we talked about right at the beginning is uh, an Outlook feature. So now with, I use Outlook in the browser exclusively, but you could do this in either version on, on desktop or the, the, the browser version is by default setting up when you share something that it moves it to the cloud so that you're always sharing a link and not an attachment. You have the ability to go in there if it's your default setting, which I have set in my system, that I can be like, no, I want to change that and actually upload and attach it. Um, once in a you know blue moon, I, I want to do that. Um, but I have that set up as default. That continues to be in my top 10 most read every month, month after month. And I wrote that like three, four years ago. Yeah. You know, people want that kind of basic help. So we should find and pool our resources, point our users to that, or create that kind of content that helps solve those kinds of basic problems. Yeah. yeah. When we haven't mastered, right? <laughs> well, there's always going to be an audience for the new. Certainly. And it's always going to be, my thinking is always going to be a larger audience than those that are looking for the 300 level content on advanced features. And it's, and it's important not to ignore those people because they become right. The, uh, the 11, the 11 that rises, uh, the whole organization, just a little 11. Exactly. Well, what is the relationship between technical skills and adoption? So you're talking about, like, we're, we're talking about these, these, uh, more complex systems and tools. Um, if, if people don't have the baseline of capability, doesn't that then impact their ability to go and do advanced training? What, yeah, what I highlight is change along this continuum involves humans and we're emotional. I mentioned the desktop phone, or the desk phone, right? Uh, there is emotion attached to that. <laughs> to that technology 
And when we ignore that or when we don't provide a sandbox where people feel safe in experimenting with the new superpowers, right, the new feature that just landed, uh, people people are uh, crawl back in their shell, right? They don't want to. They don't want to look silly. They don't want to do things wrong. I I know that uh, many feel like they're going to break something. When yeah, it's difficult to do these days, right? But um, that was the work concern. Well, I'm you, you and I both from the SharePoint background, and that was that was a big problem. Was you know touching something, wanting to try something out, and then breaking because pretty much everybody was trying things out within the production environment, which was a different, another problem, you know? I, I learned the hard way. I introduced a, uh, I think it was a lightning tools web part on the, uh, the global intranet. I, I thought I was doing it for myself, a personal uh, view. No, indeed it went out to everyone and uh, I had egg on my face in that moment and yeah. <laughs> that I can I can gum up things in SharePoint if I'm not careful. Well, that's why there are uh, again there are so many tools and out there. I mean, you have the the demo sites people can go up and stand up a free demo, uh, uh, throw a tenant out there. Microsoft makes this available so you can go and practice to your heart's content, try different things out, um, playing with that. That's that's fantastic to have that resource. Old, old paradigms also, I think, uh, hamper the skills, right? How, how the skills are manifest. So one instance is I'm comfortable working in Teams chat and I can attach a file, right? Which then becomes a OneDrive file. I know that much, right? But as soon as I need to share with another person, that doesn't operate under the same paradigm that I'm used to, right? I, I don't have that physical document that I then move to another chat, right? Or to a different environment that it, it's a, it's a, it's a cloud file at this point. And I, that's, that's where my skills stop, right? I, I, I don't take it any further. I'm, I'm hesitant to share that because um, I don't know how it operates. It's, it's different than a, an attachment that I'm used to. So yeah, uh, you, you think about OneDrive adoption. In, in Teams chat. Teams chat is widely used, but uh, I think OneDrive adoption is hampered because people don't fully understand uh, all that that enables or how, how to. Right. Well, that, that's why I like the idea of you know, uh, common scenarios. And it's important for organizations to have standards as well, to walk through and make sure people understand Hey, here is our process. Here are the tags that we associate, why we do it. And I think the exact scenario that you brought up, like we have a meeting, there's a chat that's associated with that. I share a PowerPoint slide deck up in the chat for that group of 10 people that are participating in that meeting. Where does it go? Where does it live now? Can I just share that out with other people that weren't in the meeting? What changed the permissions? Where does the file actually live? Those are scenarios which organizations need to understand and walk people through so that you don't have, like I just went in, I was in a meeting this morning and I went to upload a file. And it's like, well, this already exists. I'm like, wait a second. I'm like, oh, I, I, I thought I was in a different meeting, a different group of people. It's like, it already identified it was there. So I just grabbed the link and reshared what, what's out there because it's a live document that I was, it was actually preventing me from resharing, creating another version of something that was already in the system. And so it corrected the behavior, but it's, uh, so it's great to have those corrections. The system guided me, but people still need to have a basic understanding of those core functions. What, what often comes up in scheduling meetings specifically is how do I attach a file? Right in Teams, there's. Mm. I wish we would uh, acknowledge that that is the flow, right? And that w what we've, what we've accustomed people to 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 experience, in creating a a meeting invite, right, and ha attaching files. Why not have the attach uh, capability on that same form, but land it in that files tab, right? I I don't know many that. You have to show them. 
hey, you've got your meeting. There's a files tab now, right? And that's where you put the attachments for. Yeah. That trips people up. So yep. uh, adoption is severely hampered when uh, the skills, the digital fluency uh, with which people operate these these platforms is uh, is lacking. Yeah, there needs to be, I mean, every company should have a basic digital fluency, you know, a, a program of basic functions and do the training, track people's progress on those things, you know, test them on some of that basic capability. And I think it, it will improve the overall adoption, especially organizations. I mean, Microsoft is very focused on not just selling licenses, but are people actually using the licenses? And when you look at inside your own organization, and there's certain benefits that are available through Fast Track and other programs, there's great resources that are available. Um, I, you guys, Fast Track partner as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're a Fast Track partner as well. So there, here's resources from Planet and AppPoint to that are you know free resources for customers to be able to go and leverage. It's all about adoption. And so if you're not hitting those targets and getting those rebates because people aren't just aren't getting it, it's then you need to be more focused on, you know, those core capabilities. It it will have a direct impact to those adoption percentages. In the next month or so, we're onboarding a few faculty uh, for an organization. And part of part of what you mentioned was establishing the norms, right, or the standards and the methodology. And we're very clear about, uh, you know, here at the organization, you're likely going to be here temporarily, right? Uh, there, there's high turnover. And OneDrive is personal, right? And we emphasize that. Uh, Teams is kind of more permanent, but not but not uh, entirely uh, absent of, of a life cycle management, right? Mm -hmm. that, would, that would wipe those away and keep the environment clean for people to... Uh, to make sense of all the teams out there. And SharePoint is the final repository, right? This is your permanent storage. It's not going away when a team, you know, collapses or... Uh, so, yes, I think being very explicit up front, what I'm working into the to the session is almost that, <laughs> that uh, skills assessment or demonstration. I'm going to allow people to take over my screen and execute whatever whatever feature or capability that I'm highlighting, right? So mm. you're just talking, right? Uh, having some brave brave new faculty member volunteer, right? And, uh, okay, we just outlined this principle. How would, show us how you would go about that. Kind of a fun, unique way. People love being put on the spot like that, Noah. <laughs> you, you must be the favorite uh, facilitator. <laughs> uh. Because uh, I, I know human nature and people love to be put on the spot, you know, ask any uh, high school student. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't mind. That's right. Yeah, that's true. Uh, educators, that's right. Give them some of their own medicine. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Noah, uh, really appreciate it. I know that we could, we could talk a lot about adoption. There's a lot of other topics around that, but really appreciate this perspective on the impacts to adoption in the conversation christian yeah thanks for joining me this morning and for all of you watching if you have not yet registered uh, you can you know, please subscribe to office hours we don't spam you with other stuff it just sends you out to the it, it sends you reminders for the uh shows which are on the first and third wednesday of every month at 11 a.m eastern so hope to see you at the next one thanks a lot mm -hmm.